right. Um, this is basically a quick review. I mean, it doesn't have to be in extreme detail. It's just a description of what um, these type of rotors are and why I chose them versus going with something larger in diameter or another brand so or even larger and not even floated okay so for starters these are the 220s that come stuck these are also 220s and the reason why I stayed with the same size it should be pretty obvious but I didn't want to mess with a fork and the location of the caliper and these are pretty much drop in and so I didn't want to modify the dimensions I think they'll perform really good so a quick description these are what they appear to be floated rotors and the main difference is that you have a normal rotor that's one piece and it has its inherent problems which is one of them but the most important obvious one is that it warps when it's overheated it doesn't necessarily mean it's damaged it just it warps and so it messes up your braking what this is supposed to do is basically counteract the warping and the way it does it is basically by separating the braking surface and the center star of the rotor and by doing this what happens is that the main culprit why a rotor warps is the temperature difference between the braking surface and the center piece or the center stars a star as I like to call it this area here is cooler and stays smaller while this longitudinally gets larger but it's still one piece so these um, arms if you will want to remain the same size while the the, the longitudinal breaking surface between these two increases and so inherently it doesn't have anywhere to go so it has to bend and I made a little um, a little like um, you know demonstration this is the same size right of the rotor I use this as a um, template and then I made a larger braking surface. This is the same size also. So if, as you can see, if I was to compare, if I was to compare these two here, you have an increase larger. Now it's not to scale to the real deal, but these two are identical. The centerpieces so if I was to say that under se severe braking conditions the braking surface increases in length or diameter so what happens is if you were to maintain a connection between here and here you can see now that this surface has to warp Notice that, and the same thing with this. There's a warping effect in order to fit in the smaller star. As it cools down, it goes back to its original size. But, as I said, it doesn't mean that it breaks, but it does the damage, and the damage is if you need your brakes, you might not have your brakes because it just doesn't break well. And uh, if you are in a downhill situation, 
you end up injuring yourself because you have no brakes. Um, so what this does basically is allow for those two surfaces to move independently. This is not hinged to this as one piece. So as this expands, this rivet here also expands, but they're, since they're not connected, they stay together mechanically, but not as one piece. So they allow the brake surface here to remain straight and flat. And therefore you still have maximum, as I would say, maximum braking potential. And you don't go through the warpage issue. There will be other issues when you overheat these, like the frictional force will change, but overall you remove the warping issue. And that's the main thing. Coupled with better uh, pads, I'm hoping to at least double the performance, especially on the critical issues when you need your brakes the most. All right, a quick description. Um, it's what it looks like. This is an aluminum and these are stainless st steel rivets. They're pretty tight in there. And so when they overheat, obviously this will loosen up, but it's not going to fall off. This, uh, pla uh, this um, aluminum, aluminum star is pre it has pretty good thickness on its um, arms potentially thicker than the braking surface and because it's aluminum i'm guessing they had to but that's what it it is and it has a recessed um machined surface for the main thing side this way it maintains uh, uh, the correct location for this rotor other rotors from other companies might not, but this obviously needs needs it, and uh, it automatically makes it such that it um, has only one way to to properly install it. I went ahead and I cracked these open. This way, I can remove this because I removed it earlier when I used it as a template, and so. I'm going to do a quick test fitting and take a few measurements and compare them. So bear with me for a, a moment. Now, quick comparison. I'll just quickly see if it fits. Yes, it does. I'll install it in here later with uh, the already used screws just for fitting, but I want to do a quick measurement of thickness and uh, screw hole diameter. So. Let's start with the screw holes. So it's about 5.2 millimeters. I'm guessing it should be the same. Yeah, about 5.2 millimeters. Um, the reason it's important is that when you install it, there's gonna usually there's gonna be a little bit of play. Um, when you do install it, you gotta pay attention to the torque because it's usually not a lot. It's just sufficient there to keep it in place, and its screws have Loctite in there. 
for them not to you know loosen up and fall out but it has to be at its specific torque because that's what's going to allow this rotor to center because as you'll see there's a little bit of play so that's right these are identical now the thickness the, this rotor appears to be 1.99 I would guess the error is that 0.01 so it's about two millimeters which actually makes it makes it thinner thinner than uh, the original rotor and that's by almost a half a millimeter which is I would say significant now how that will affect performance obviously if this was the same thickness you would safely guess that it's going to perform better than than at, at two millimeters but because these are two different designs and obviously this is a much better design I am still guessing it's going to be significantly better all right and therefore my my favor is still this one I know the competition has rotors that are thicker and floated but they're far more expensive and the ones that are equally priced as the Maguros Maguras I don't pronounce it correctly they're just not they don't have the the brand repetition uh, reputation for for this kind of performance and so I still bet on this one over this one but just so you know this is a two millimeter and this is two and a half all right so now I'm gonna test fit it with the original screws they don't appear to have been installed with Loctite the threads are clean but the ones that were included with the Magura rotors do have and those are the screws that I will use for the actual proper installation Now, I'm going to make him snug by hand, but, and I'm, I'm not going to tighten them with a torque wrench yet, but a good, because it's such a low torque number required, I wouldn't be surprised if I just get it about right with a regular hand twist. It does look a lot better and uh, just for your information this is a torque 25 I believe yeah torque torque screw 25 and so it are these that are included basically what you get in the package since 
I'm doing this review as I go along. I'm not really planning it. You get a manual and the only really valuable information there is, um, it's the torque uh, listing, which is on the first page. And you get this envelope-like packaging with the one rotor, one rotor in there and the screw packet and the manual. That's all you get. And the price I paid for was about $38, which is a big factor why I chose these. It's a good brand. A lot of people like them. A lot of people use them. They don't complain. And with the current discount, this was really hard to beat at $28. I will have the link to, to the store that I purchased them from in the description. But yeah, I mean, these things are pretty good looking. They're a good looking piece, all right? And you know the specs. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching my review. It's just the basics. Cheers.